Well, hello, internet friends near and far. Welcome to another episode of Parks and Conversation. This is a podcast where we take some time to watch an episode of Parks and Rec, and then we talk about it. And by me, I mean myself, Jason. I'm, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm me. And then I'm also joined by my friend Jeremy all the way across town by the power of the internet. Jeremy, say hello. Hey, how's it going? How's the weather? Uh, well, today it is drizzly. And it'll probably be that way for the next uh, several days. But the good news is uh, I'm leaving. <laughs> See ya. I'm going to California. Uh, and hey, Jeremy, you're yeah. going to California, too. So sweet. But by oh, the t- that's awesome. But by the time people listen to this episode, we will have already been making our way back from California. Oh, so I'm already disappointed. <laughs> <laughs> so tr- our vacation Listener, as you're listening to this, our trip is over. <laughs> so, man, yeah. How so was, it? It was, <laughs> was it? Well, uh, I had some churros and uh-huh. uh, the uh, yeah, so it's going to be good, I think. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry about that thing. Yeah, I'll forgive you. Okay. Eventually. All right. Eventually. So glad I, glad I bought you that churro. <laughs> thank you. Uh-huh. That all made right. it all better. What are we doing today? Well, we're going to talk about season four, episode 13, Bowling for Votes. And as we talked about last week in our uh, preparation for this one, is this is not one of our favorite episodes. Agreed. Um, and uh, there's funny stuff that happens in here. Mm-hmm. But I, I think you and I could both say, like, we don't like Leslie's actions in this episode. It seems... Yeah. It seems un unnatural. Yeah, not since like like Citizen Nope has she or even the canvassing one. You know, like right. she's just really, really keyed up in this one. For mm-hmm. and I don't think I, I don't feel like we've we we see her get this intense again. Like neat, like needy. I think it's the neediness. Like she's blowing a huge opportunity, and for for what? For yeah. this, this guy who's a jerk, you know? Right. Yeah. And, and I do think that there is an important lesson learned in this episode for Leslie. So I think there is a, um, yeah, we'll get into it. But I do think there is some growth happening for Leslie in this mm-hmm. episode. Whereas I don't think uh, this kind of growth could have happened earlier in this series. But I think there's some important growth, but it is... It's sad to watch Leslie uh, debase herself <laughs> for, 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 for her Derek. <laughs> so classic um, Derek. Yeah. So really, the the fun of this episode comes in the um, in the phone bank with Jerry, Team Captain Jerry. Yeah. And uh, Tom's bowling with Ron. Right. Agreed. It's the Leslie and Ben and Derek stuff that is like, ugh, not a fan. Yeah. So, um, so how about we start with the phone bank piece? Okay. And then we focus on the bowling piece. How's that sound? I'm on board. But we'll start with the cold open because it gets okay. the whole ball rolling. Hey. Um, <laughs> I, I, did, I didn't <laughs> mean real? to do that. Oh wow. <laughs> I am an unintentional punner, so it's pun intentional. <laughs> oh my gosh! <laughs> so when I try, it's terrible. <laughs> it's terrible when anybody does it. Oh and come that's, on! That's why I do it. <laughs> <laughs> There's a win there, though. Like when you when you have a good pun, man, it's just like bowling a strike. Yeah, at least one person thinks it's funny, and it's usually you. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No one else cares that you bowled, a, bowled that strike. <laughs> right. It's usually just just the person who bowled the strike. So, um, Unless you're on a team, and I don't know a lot about a lot, a lot of pun teams out there. <laughs> pun team? That'd be great. Um, so uh, <laughs> this, <laughs> let's just move on. <laughs> it's like a debate in high school. It's like a pun. It's like a pun off. Which they actually have those. There's there's one. There's there's a there's a bar in downtown Seattle that I haven't been to, but they have like instead of like uh, trivia night, they have like pun offs, like rap battles, but for puns. Well, I definitely will be busy that night. So. Okay, I'm not, I'm not gonna make it. Um, this episode kicks off with a focus group, 
And uh, have you ever been in a focus group, Jeremy? No. Never did. You've never done any kind of research group of any kind. No, I got a I got a call uh, back in the 80s, like very seriously. Wait, a, what? Yeah, what? You were getting you, Jeremy, were getting phone calls for focus groups in the 80s. Yeah. No, no. Well, listen, listen on. I don't know. Do you remember the show uh, Webster? Uh huh. I do. Yes. Uh, and, and the, like, that was the one with the guy and, the, and they had the, 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 the dumb waiter. I always wanted a dumb waiter. Right. Was that, that was Webster, right? right? Yeah, yeah, sure. yeah. Okay. So, so Webster aired and I don't know how anybody heard or found out or anything, but, but my parents called down to me and said, Hey, there's somebody on the phone that wants to talk to you about okay. your, about the TV show. <laughs> and I was like, Oh, okay. And it was somebody polling about Webster and what I thought about it. I don't know how I have no clue. I have no idea what how they got my information or that there was even a kid that lived at that house. It was it was and like at the time I was young enough, like I'm not looking back, like it was really creepy. I haven't thought about this for years. And they're like, So what did you think? I was like, Yeah, that it happened. It was a lot like how I am on this podcast. Like, yeah, that yeah. was funny. Yeah. That's that's good. Um how about you? They, well, uh, oh. yeah, I've been a part of several uh, focus groups, but I want to oh, wow. follow up on your Webster situation. Now, Webster <laughs> um, is about a the, the main character in Webster is a classically short individual. Sure. So do you think maybe they're trying to see the relation to heighted individuals? I, I mean, I was tall I mean, for your age. age probably. I, I was, I was kind of tall for my age, I guess. But again, I don't know how they would have gotten that information. Well, like, I don't know if my parents signed me up for something they didn't know about. Maybe they were like, maybe they, they saw an ad in a magazine for <laughs> for tall people weekly. <laughs> and they were like, hey, we want to know how to like reach out to tall kids. Right. And so See what your, they think about short mom kids on TV. Were, <laughs> your mom and dad were like, oh, we have a giant. Right. <laughs> so let's see. And so Webster people were like, let's uh, let's get some. I mean, we have this this short person in the show. Let's see if we can like build some bridges or some ladders to relate to some tall people. <laughs> yeah, I didn't like it because I felt like he, he was like he was so short, like aggressively short. Like he was just throwing it in my face. <laughs> yes, thank you. I was trying to get there. Um, <laughs> so uh, <laughs> I'm glad you stuck with it. <laughs> I wasn't I wasn't going to like abort on this bit because I knew there was a way to get here. Um, so the. Uh, in the focus group, uh, they are playing a speech from Leslie um, <laughs> where she's talking about just policy uh, ideas that are super boring. Uh, and Tom is leading the focus group. And Tom's the perfect person to lead a focus group um, because he's not going to guide anybody's directions or opinions in any way. So he's asking, like, what don't you like about her? Or what do you like about her? What don't you like about her? Her ideas, her voice, her clothes, probably. <laughs> <laughs> so um and uh yeah so the first um first person um says that uh she's kind of short don't you think aggressively short almost <laughs> it's like she's throwing it in my face <laughs> and tom's response is insightful <laughs> so yeah focus groups are this way so like i've been in in, in several focus groups because i had friends who worked at a focus group company. And so every six months, I would be eligible for another focus group. And so they would call me all the time and be like, yeah, I'll come down and get $100 to talk about chips. It was a good gig for a college student. Did you get to eat the chips? Mm -hmm. Yeah, oh, that's good. Yeah. So um, those kinds of things are great. But th the thing about focus groups is they're also kind of a waste of time. <laughs> <laughs> and especially this one, because like the, the people are just talking about things that they feel and there's no actual quantity or quantitative information here. So like she's short and it's like, she can't do anything about it. Right. Um, and then another one, uh, uh says that, uh, she, uh, I don't like her name. Like she seems nice and tough, but I, um, I went out with a Leslie and, and she broke my heart and now all Leslie's are terrible. Would she change her name? You know, like <laughs> that's the kind of feedback you get from some focus groups. Uh, but the inciting incident for all of this episode is there's one guy in here named Derek who uh, says that he would not vote for uh, for Leslie because she seems uptight and not the kind of person you could go bowling with. And Leslie can't handle this. And she's like, I'm an excellent bowler. Ask Ron. 
joke, <laughs> which is arguably one of my favorite parts of this whole episode is that Leslie keeps telling people to ask Ron how good a bowler Leslie is, um, which is great. I love that. Um, and uh, yeah, so this is kind of the inciting incident. This is one of the cold opens that like plays through the whole rest of the episode. Mm -hmm. And even the credit scene has to do with the episode. It's not totally uh, removed. And so I, I find this episode to be well crafted. You know, last week we talked about how we don't like this one very much, but there is some craft happening here. And I really appreciate um, the way it's written. I just wish Leslie wasn't the way she is. <laughs> so, um, so there's right. going to be like, like, like the focus group. <laughs> yes. Yeah, exactly. I wish she was taller and um, not named Leslie. So, uh, so we'll get back to that, but let's go off to Jerry. He's got a very important job. He's a team leader for a, a fundraising phone bank. Um, and it's happening at April and Andy's house. Cause I think Ben, you know, Ben lives there too. So he probably was like, uh, we can use my place for this phone bank. Here's my question. Why can't they use Leslie's house? Like she lives alone. And like, couldn't they just set up the campaign there all the time? But well, she's a hoarder. And I know that I know that she got her house clean, but we never go back. I don't think we go back. So it's probably right back to where it was before. There's, yeah, we, just, there's, not, there's not enough room. I don't think we go back to Leslie's house until like season six or seven. Yeah. And that's a new house. Yeah. Because they move. So mm. anyway, oh, yeah. interesting. Anyway. So, um, yeah. So Jerry is going to get everybody excited. Um, and so it's got this phone base, got Jerry, April, Andy, Donna, and Chris all trying to raise phones, uh, raise funds. Um, and, uh, the person who raises the most money is, uh, going to win two tickets to the movie theater, the to, monoplex, the monoplex. <laughs> yeah. I'm, I'm surprised it's not called the movie building. <laughs> well, yeah. Uh, it, maybe they were next to the sports building and they're like, well, we can't both be the building. So what, what, what are other theaters called? Well, this one's called a cineplex. All right, cool. Cool. This one's called a multiplex. Great. Yeah, but we only have one screen. I got it. Monoplex. One screen. Um, so, yeah, so that's what they're they're doing. Um, and uh, so that's going to be exciting and motivating. And Chris is so excited because he uh, is going to try to win those tickets for a romantic night with Millicent Gergich. Um, and uh, yeah, so he's doing this. Um, and uh, yeah, so this is going to be the the call call center is working to make these funds. Um, April is not really excited about doing this at all. Andy, I think gets confused as we walk through this. Uh, and we can tell he's confused because Jerry earlier says like, um, I know nobody thinks this is going to be fun. And Chris starts laughing <laughs> hysterically and says, no one is thinking that. And Andy's like, I starts laughing too, but he's like, I kind of was, <laughs> why are we laughing? Why, why are we laughing? <laughs> that's, so, how I, that's how I get out of most of my conversations. Yeah. So, <laughs> okay. And then just walk <laughs> off. <laughs> yeah, it works. So I'll see you later. Um, so the next time we see the phone bank, Chris is calling somebody and says, I'm calling on behalf of Leslie Nope, who's running for city council. Is this Deidre Splatterfork? <laughs> and that is literally the most beautiful name I have ever heard. <laughs> Deidre Splatterfork. <laughs> um, it, yeah. So, well, and, and we're also missing just a little, little bit of, of a foreshadowing here with um, Chris gets super excited about the tickets because he could use that for a romantic night with Millicent Kirkich. Right. And uh, I did say that. <laughs> I was uh, not paying attention. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But as he's saying that, though, there is something, there's a little bit of a, uh, a, a turn to Jerry. That's like. Yeah, that's, we, that's what yeah. I meant. Yeah. So. No, I was uh, looking up Plex suffix. Like, what does Plex mean? Like, yeah. Uh, what yeah. does it mean, Jeremy? We're also oh, uh, an educational podcast. That's what the E yeah. stands for. Yeah, <laughs> it means uh, 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 pertaining to uh, multiple parts of something or parts of whatever came before. So like quadruplex, duplex, two, four. So monoplex. I just I didn't know if it was like a it worked or not. 
it does it plays all out all right okay well we'll go to the review and uh, we'll see what New York has to say about it. But we're going to keep going here. Okay. So Chris is uh, calling Deidre Splatterfork. Uh, Andy uh, says, uh, no, I don't think we can accept donations over $50. <laughs> um, and then Jerry is like, well, I don't know why you would need my social security number. But yeah, OK. And he always starts giving this number to the person. Uh, and then Donna is having a romantic conversation with whoever she's raising <laughs> funds from. What are you wearing? Fine. <laughs> so, um, and then uh, April is uh, like doing terrible. And uh, it's like, if you don't want to donate, then don't, but I'm calling from inside the house. <laughs> um, and then, uh, so Chris celebrates, he raised a hundred dollars from Miss Splatter Fork. Um, and uh, yeah, so he's doing great. He can't be stopped. And Les, uh, April just wants to make his happiness go away. Dun, dun, dun. When Gary, when Gary gives a social security number, he starts, it starts with 210, two which means that he was born in Pennsylvania. Oh, yeah, good to know. Indiana's social security numbers start with 303. Oh, I'm almost, I'm almost on the way to being able to fake other people's social security numbers. So There you go. Do you know Michigan's? I do. <laughs> <laughs> what is it, Jason? <laughs> I'm not telling you. Uh, <laughs> so hold on, hold on. I might not be paying attention for a little while. Go ahead. Are you looking it up? <laughs> no. <laughs> okay. Uh, all right. So then uh, let's go down a little bit to the next time we see the phone bank, and April um, is calling Miss Gallivan, and uh, she. Wait, I think I went too far. I'm sorry. Please forgive me. Nope, I did not go too far. Okay, so she's calling uh, Miss Gallivan, and she's raising money for uh, Leslie, and she's now she's going for it because she wants to beat uh, beat Chris at raising funds. And so we get a, a montage of her talking about how she really believes in Leslie, and then talking to somebody uh, in with a Spanish accent because April is of Puerto Rican descent. So she's like, no, mirror, 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 mirror. It's like whatever you want, like $10. It don't matter. Um, and then uh, she has a Southern accent We're talking about her Grammy, talking to her and her cousins about, uh, you know, if you, you can't eat the biscuits, if you don't pay for the flour, she's really going for it here. <laughs> and then cuts to Chris, who's doing a counseling session. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's like, no, you tell Stephen that you will be treated with respect. <laughs> and thank you for your donation. <laughs> uh, and. Uh, and then April um, is talking to another one named Fred. Like it would all, I just want to live in a better place in a better world. And your contribution will help us get there. <laughs> so this city council contribution will help us get to a better world, which is uh, a big stretch uh, the, for the, the better place world, the better place. Oh, almost like a, almost like a good place. Mm. Hmm. Yes. That's deep. I don't know. It's all the same universe. Um, and so then, uh, next time we see Chris is going to take a, a tea break and he starts talking uh, to everybody he tells, the, tells all the phone bank folks that he is going to ask Millicent to move in with him. If that's okay with you, Jerry. Um, and Jerry's like, yeah, sure. Of course. And, uh, uh, but then he's uh, just like, why don't you go take a break <laughs> out of here? Cause this is not, uh, everybody else is working. But first, uh, Andy's like super stoked. Like he invites them to live with them. Oh, right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, when he lists everybody. It's like, you want to live with us, Ben and Champion, the three-legged dog? Like they would have forgotten. <laughs> uh, and, and, and Chris is like, that's an amazing, and, and it's an amazing offer. And Chris is like, yes. Or Andy, sorry. Andy's like, yes. <laughs> like, I got it. He's yeah. Like, but yeah, anyway. Well, I feel like Andy is still trying to build like the best team. Like, <laughs> yeah. He's trying to like he thinks the more pe more people in his house is better. Like because Andy is a golden retriever. And as as you know, I have a golden retriever. Yes. And she is excited when there are lots of people around. She's like more people to pet me. <laughs> so <laughs> it's, it's this true. is the best day. He's like um, all these. He's like Andy's like all of these people can take care of me. Right. Yeah. This will be less work for me if they're all here. Uh, take making sure I don't hit my brain helmet on the wall again. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, yeah. So Jerry tells Chris, like, hey, I, I, I need you to go take a break somewhere else so everybody else can focus. And April's like, you're being weird. Why are you being so weird? And that, this is when Jerry says, Chris, uh, Millie's going to break up with Chris. 
which uh, then makes it all, uh, you know, shocking news. And Annie's response is, that's going to be really awkward when they move in together. <laughs> <laughs> and Donna's reaction was like, what? <laughs> like, this just got real. Yeah. Now she's got some drama that I she mean, gets to be a part of. So, um, so yeah. So then cut back to the phone bank and Andy's on the phone and he's like, $20? Um, I think we're looking for more donations in the $10,000 range. And he's crossing his fingers like he's hoping this will do it. <laughs> oh, just one. <laughs> There reminds then, me, there's a, there's a Jack in the Box commercial where like Jack Jack is like walking around this like food convention mm-hmm. and there's a kid at a table. Do you remember this one? I do. Yeah. And he just has one chicken nugget on there. And they're like, well, how much for your chicken nugget? He's like a million dollars. And he's like, that seems expensive. So he's like, I just need to sell one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. The, the Jack in the Box commercials used to be amazing. And now I feel like they've, they've, uh, they've drifted off of amazingness into uh boring i don't know i don't know they're not as good as they used to be you know who used to have really great commercials and outside of the northwest they probably don't know what i'm talking about but ivers the clams oh yeah they just would dance around and run around on the beach like that was yeah there was a time when we had dancing clams and uh running beer bottles like in your beer yeah people dressed up in clams and beer but like and a and a guy in a taco and a in a cactus suit. Yeah. <laughs> and Jack Robertson. <laughs> oh, okay, now you're getting way off. Uh yeah. Commercials used to be awesome around here, is all I'm saying. And now we've got all these big corporate overlords. Um, so anyway. I don't see it. I don't see like an Amazon mascot running around. Uh the Amazon mascot is all those trucks. <laughs> <laughs> That's the mascot. And they're everywhere. Why doesn't Amazon do for like what? I mean, I know they're not Google, but why don't they do Amazon Maps like with their trucks? I mean, they're everywhere. They could just be. I just thought about that the other day. You mean like have the camera? Yeah. They go down every single road. They that's, have to. that's true. Multiple times a day. Yeah. Um, you know, Jeremy, th- these are some really good ideas. <laughs> I know they have nothing to do with this episode, but it just, you know, yeah, it's how they don't it goes. have anything to do yet. But I did get an email. The other day from Amazon uh, podcast promotion people saying, oh. hello, Parks and do- Conversation. It is How great to have. <laughs> I don't know. I don't remember ever setting it up on there, so I didn't respond. <laughs> but they didn't call me by my name. They called me by the podcast name. So I was like, this is not a real email. Um, what anyway. did you think of Webster? <laughs> We're just following up on a conversation <laughs> from about 40 years ago. <laughs> wow. <laughs> I'm significantly older than you, so <laughs> considerably older. Considerably. Yeah. Significant means like it's whoa, that's no, I just consider you older than me. So because <laughs> you are. Um, so yeah, so as Andy is trying to get that ten thousand dollar donation, <laughs> Millie shows up and uh and Chris is like super excited to see her. Um and uh he gets off the call and everybody in the room is like super awkward. Um, and Andy's whistling, <laughs> staring straight ahead, not then, making any eye contact. And then he's like, what's that champion? You need to go outside now. Come on. <laughs> That's a boy. Sorry. He hates awkward situations. <laughs> so one of the great things about having a dog is blaming all the things that you like, you blame so much stuff on your dog. So, um, yeah, so Chris and Jerry are going to go out for a walk, um, and Jerry or Chris and Millie are going to go for a walk, and and Jerry says, "Look, if you want to take the rest of the night off, that'd be fine." And uh, Chris is like, "No, I want to. Um, I don't think that'll be necessary unless Millie wants to go to dinner." And he's like Millie's like, "No, this won't take long." <laughs> like Chris is so oblivious to what's about to happen. This won't take long. And Donna's like, you might want to take a jacket with you. <laughs> it's going to get cold out there. And and Chris still just like, no, her company will keep me warm. And Donna, you want to bring a jacket. <laughs> which, which would be a really sweet thing to say, if not for the impending breakup. Right. Yeah. And then talking head of April saying, I wish for his <laughs> happiness to go away. I might be a wizard. <laughs> which is hilarious. I mean, I don't know the the hierarchy, but I think like, why didn't she? She didn't say which wizard female with i don't know i don't know how it works but i love that she chose wizard yeah i think she's open to whatever kind of magic she may be accessing to take away people's happiness yeah so um yeah so i missed something dang it 
sorry, I scrolled too far. Um, yeah, so then uh, Jerry, uh, it cuts back and Jerry's on the phone and he's talking to Millie and he gets off the phone. He's like, yeah, it happened. They broke up and everybody's mad at Jerry. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like he broke him up. <laughs> it's like, I didn't do anything. Um, and so then um, the winner of the whole thing turns out to be April. She who, did it. Yeah, she won the two tickets to the monoplex and, uh, you know, Chris comes in in this whole thing and he feels terrible. And um, Andy is oblivious to how sad she is as she's winning. And Chris is sad. And he's just like, yes, that's my wife. <laughs> <laughs> um, and so. Uh, so April, it feels terrible um, for for Chris. And so the next day he uh, she goes and sees him in the office and, and asks, like, how are you doing? Um, and, uh, Chris is like, he's like, well, we, Millicent, Millicent and I broke up, but this is why this could be the greatest thing that ever happened. And he has nothing to say. <laughs> that was the saddest joke. It was, <laughs> it was like, it was too real. It was, it was like, here's Chris who is constantly trying to spin to the positive and, and he can't do it this time. And so, uh, which was a bummer. Um, and so April is uh trying to make him feel better and so she gives him the tickets um and and chris like no you earn them (laughs) and and it was like they're eight bucks (laughs) (laughs) and this is a gesture and then he looks and he's like oh there's three here um and april april is having a growth moment as well Mm -hmm. because she bought an extra ticket so that andy and april and chris could all go to the movies together sometime um and uh and Chris is, he, you know, gives her a hug and April's like, okay, bye. I'm out of here. <laughs> um, but yeah, it was like, like, this was a kind moment from April. Yeah. And, and she, and, and not to be the actual guy, but she hugged Chris. Like, and yeah. I think, and it, and it matters because that she's not like, she hates everybody or, you know, at least pretends to, and doesn't like physical, like when, you know, Leslie tries to give her a hug or something, she, she just doesn't like that. So. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. So it's a big moment for for April. Yeah, for April and and Chris. And uh, yeah, it's good to it's good for Chris to recognize that you can't always have everything positive all the time, Mm -hmm. which we're going to get into with Chris because he will cycle into a path of despair, which will lead him to meeting his counselor, uh, Richard (laughs) Nygaard. Um, You go to Richard Nygaard, too? Yeah. I'm a Nygardian. Nygardian. Um, I did hear that there's a a a fan theory that uh, Richard Nygard is Chris. <laughs> <laughs> he's he's counseling himself. <laughs> yeah, which I I could I could get on board with that. I think. I mean, that... he did he did look into the mirror and say, "Stop pooping." Exactly. Yeah. So he knows he knows what people need to hear to continue to grow. I have me. <laughs> yeah, I, I had forgotten. Because it had been so long since we had seen Millie and we have talked about Millie on the show because we took basically the summer of not talking about the show. Mm-hmm. I forgot last last week when he said, I'm a, I have a hot girlfriend. I was like, who's that? <laughs> oh, Millicent. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I totally forgot that it was Millicent. <laughs> and then this episode, Millicent shows up like, oh, <laughs> that's his hot girlfriend. Got it. Um, all right. So. Uh, back to Leslie and and the gang. She and Ben are having breakfast as they are talking about the uh, focus group. And uh, Ben points out, you know, seventy one percent think you have a strong command of the issues, but only thirty three percent that they would consider voting for you. Um, and Leslie's like, yeah, that's interesting. Um, but she's focused on why that guy wouldn't want to go bowling with her. Um, and Ben's like, you gotta let it go. And he's like, no, I'm really good. Ask, ask Ron. Um, and so she did some research, uh, on the guy and she has a binder, a full binder, like a three inch binder <laughs> called bowling comment. <laughs> and, uh, it's all about <laughs> Derek. Um, and Ben is like, why are you doing this? Um, and, uh, and Ben's like, and April's like, er, I'm saying all their names. Uh, <laughs> Leslie points out that he, Derek's not that good. He's only a 32 average according to the most recent data. Um, and, uh, and one 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 thirty two because thirty two would be terrible. Did I say thirty two? Yeah, one thirty two. Okay. I'm sorry. I wasn't paying um, attention earlier, so I'm trying to make up now. Thank you. Wow, you're really doing it. Um, and uh, Ben, his whole point is like, look, some people are not going to like you, 
and you have to be okay with that. That's his, his lesson that he's trying to help Leslie see. Leslie cannot let it go mm-hmm. because she wants everybody to like her and she wants to win everybody over to her side. But Ben keeps saying people vote with their gut, with their guts and not with their brains. Uh, and so there's a lot of things that, that you cannot change. But um, and he's like, people need to see that you're fun and that they can hang out with you. And then this is where this the the story starts to lose credibility with me because they're talking about this bowling comment. And Leslie's first suggestion is, why don't we host a bowling night? And Ben didn't see what what she was doing. Right. <laughs> right here. Like, let's host a bowling night. OK, mm-hmm. that's a, and Ben's like, that's a good idea. And so they do host the bowling night. Um, and she's like, I'm a good bowler. Really? Ask Ron. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, uh, yeah. So then, uh, at the bowling alley, the rock and roll bowl, bowlathon or whatever it was called. Um, Leslie is standing in the entryway to welcome people trying to look casual and uh, she's terrible at it. Um, and, uh, and she's, so she's talking to Anne's like, I forgot basically how to look casual, how to stand. <laughs> um, and, uh, Ron comes, um, in and, uh, Leslie's like, thanks for coming. And so of course, this is my favorite restaurant in all of Pawnee. Uh, and it cuts to Ron at the, uh, at the menu. Uh, and the menu is hot dogs for a dollar hamburgers for a dollar 50. And then it zooms out and Ron is just nodding. <laughs> like, yes. And, and is like, aren't you scared to eat here? And one of the best Ron lines of all time, when I eat, it is the food that is scared. <laughs> <laughs> Like those so, old, like those old Chuck Norris lines. Yeah, yeah. So, um, yeah. So then Tom comes in and he's all like decked out, ready to bowl. Uh, and Anne is like, "Wow, you really go for it when you." <laughs> and so <laughs> looking like Ryan Gosling from Drive, right? Um, so his Louis Vuitton bowling bag, <laughs> <laughs> which you know we know he probably just ordered off Sky Mall that day. Sure. Um, so <laughs> Sky Mall. <laughs> if, I don't remember when Sky Mall died, but. It must have been around it, this time. It lives on in our hearts. Right. Exactly. So uh, so then it cuts to Tom and Anne and Ron because they're in a lane together, which is hilarious to me <laughs> that the campaign team here, they're all bowling together. I'm like, you guys need to like spread out and bowl with other people. That's what your campaign event is about. But anyway, um, anyway. So, uh, so Tom is trying to go through all the li- lists of different names that he would want. Um, T-Rex, T-Boss, Tommy Tsunami, Tiki Tiki Tom Tom. No, Fly Guy. And Ron's just like, I wrote Tom. Uh, and, and then <laughs> you also see that he wrote Girl for <laughs> Anne. <laughs> so, uh, I, and I, I, think, I think Ron's is bowler. <laughs> yeah. Um, so the... Uh, so then it cuts to Leslie talking to one of the people there who's like, I really like the ad with, from when you were a kid. It was so great to get to know you. And she's excited to welcome this person. Uh, and then Ben comes over. He's like, hey, it looks like it's pretty good turnout. Uh, but then he notices that, isn't that the guy from the focus group? Uh, and Leslie's like, well, what? How did he hear about it? Uh, so Ben asks, how did you hear about this? And he got a personalized invitation. <laughs> and Ben's just like, I didn't realize we were sending out invitations. Who knew? See, um, and, and, and the thing is, is like that extra that was talking to her. And I know that was just kind of to show that she was actually talking to people. But I think it was like, even though it was a little bit of a throwaway kind of like scene with this person, it's like right here, right in front of like literally right in front of you is somebody saying, hey, it's it's nice to get to, it's nice to have a beer. Like she's winning. Like it's it works. She is a nice person. That's the validation. But she needs it from this specific person. So she completely misses everything else, which Ben right. brings up later. So. Yeah, I, li- I like that they threw that guy in there just to kind of really highlight that point early on. Yeah, good point. Good point. And so, um, yeah, so Ben's whole thing throughout this series is going to be like, you need to look at everybody here, mm-hmm. not just Derek, um, which <laughs> I just yeah. hear, I just hear wind chimes every time you say Derek. <laughs> I'm Derek. I'm Derek. <laughs> <laughs> he was in. uh <laughs> He, he he was I, I love uh, Jason M- M- Muzakis. I, I can't remember say his name, uh, Muzakis. And uh, he was in the season series finale of uh, Brooklyn Nine Nine. Yes. And uh, Jocelyn was like, oh, Derek's here. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> it's like she had forgotten that he was actually Adrian Pimento in that one. Um, but uh, yeah, so it cuts to Ron and his team bowling and he bowls a strike um, and talking head straight down the middle. No hook, no spin, no fuss, anything more. And this becomes figure skating. <laughs> which I love that. <laughs> um, and then the, it's Tom's time to go and he gets his ball and uh talks to the the ball like let's knock these pins down and then he bowls granny style <laughs> and uh and and is like are you serious and ron one of my favorite thing another one of my favorite ron lines is son people can see you <laughs> and i say that all the time <laughs> when i when one of my kids does something weird or embarrassing i'm like son people can see you <laughs> oh my gosh did you see tom's ball the bowling ball was a entertainment 720 bowling ball sh- uh, that was looked like the earth. <laughs> yeah, he probably made a bunch of those. <laughs> so, um, but yeah, but he rolls a strike, and uh, and so Ann and and Ron are just shocked by this. Um, and so, uh, so then back to Ben telling to Leslie as they're bowling, like, hey, you need to look at the big picture. Um, and it's and Leslie's like, I'm trying to make that big picture include Derek. Um, and and so he she invites um Derek to bowl one on one. Um and uh and Derek is like, okay, sure, whatever. And uh yeah, and they they bowl, but Leslie is standing weird, is still trying to look casual, and Derek is like, Are you okay? <laughs> My sister has scoliosis. I think you might, <laughs> you know. <laughs> Um, and so they, they start bowling and, uh, Derek or she ordered some wings like, Hey, do you like wings? And, and Derek's like, yeah, I love them. And, and Leslie's like, really? Who knew? And cut to a talking head with the bowling comment, uh, binder. She's like, I knew. So she's <laughs> trying to orchestrate this whole thing for, uh, for Derek. She's going to l- try to lose intentionally to help him feel better about himself. Um, and, uh, and yeah, so. I think maybe this is the part where maybe, and maybe I, I haven't thought about this. So right now it's just too much. It's just so it's just too like, and I get that this is a comedy show and all that, but it, you know, like you said, when Leslie tried to bring up this bowling thing with Ben now, I mean, she has this massive elaborate plan that like nobody would do, you know, like it's just, it's just too much. And I think this is where it kind of falls apart for me, mm-hmm. you know? So this is the beginning of the end. Yeah. So this is our last episode. Um, <laughs> yeah. So, uh, yeah. But then Leslie also talks about how um, the beers are as cold as Takataya Tuck Winter Road, <laughs> which is from Ice Road Truckers. And uh, and turns out that's Derek's favorite show. And now Leslie's guilty pleasure. Um, and so she's trying too hard to win this this guy over. Um, and it is annoying. Cut back to Ron and Tom. <laughs> and he. Uh, rolls another ball and another strike, and Ron is completely flummoxed by this. Um, so uh, when Leslie does roll bowl a strike, she gets mad at herself because uh, she's trying to lose on purpose. And Derek is like, "What are you doing? I thought you were you just bowled a strike." He's like, "No, this is how I motivate myself. Always trying to be better." Um, and uh, then Derek rolls a strike, and Leslie says, "Man, you're down with strikes. They should call you Norma Ray." Uh, and Derek has no idea what she's talking about, um, because why would he? Um, and uh, and so then she tries to explain that Norma Ray is a movie with Sally Field about you know. Never mind. Um, Which and, is a callback to her and Ben's conversation where she was talking about being a, an elitist, right? Yeah. So um, so uh, yeah. So Derek and they just keep bowling, and Ben comes over and is like, "Hey, how's it going? I want to remind you not to focus on just one pin." You try to knock down a lot of pins, waving to the rest of the the whole bowling alley, and uh, she's like, "Yeah, I get it, but uh, I'm uh, gonna keep doing this." And uh, Derek's like, "Hey, could you get another one of these pitchers of beer <laughs> to Ben?" And Ben's like, "I don't work here." <laughs> um, so yeah, Leslie is not hearing what Tom is or Ben is saying. So well, and, Der- and Derek's even like just being super misogynistic. He's like, "You know, it's your turn. Try not to break a nail." Like he- right. Like this, the red flags are there. Yeah. He's never going to vote for her. Um, but she's going to keep, she's going to keep trying. And, uh, and then, uh, Ron bowls a spare or not a spare. He wrote bowls a seven. Um, and, uh, Tom's like, Hey, good job. Were we trying to get a seven? Cause if you were, you did a great job. 
Uh, and Ron is so mad. And, uh, and Ron, as Tom is reaching down to get his ball, uh, his fingers get uh, pinched between uh, another ball, the ball that came up, and he blames Ron for it because uh, <laughs> Ron is jealous of my gift. <laughs> <laughs> You're jealous of my gift. <laughs> Do you have any pride at all? <laughs> um, and, and so, uh, and the Are nurse. Are you a female bird? <laughs> <laughs> my fingy. Yeah. Tom goes over the top real quick. Um, and uh, and so, and the nurse or the girl uh, <laughs> gets, gets, is like, we got to get Tom some ice. And so they, work on that project um and uh because tom is a project and so then turns out the game leslie lost Derek won and uh and it's like did you have any fun yeah and it's like uh, i'm never gonna say no to free beer and bowling and then Leslie's like well thanks for coming i'm running for city council i was wondering do i have your vote and Derek's like no and she's like really i can't count on you for your vote it's like no i don't think so and um and it gets down to it, it's like why and Derek's just like i don't like you and and then he says, well, you're a crappy bowler. So you're like right there, right there. Like one more. Why? Like, why don't you like me? Yeah. I, yeah. Let's see. We, we, we would have gotten to the, the bottom of it. But instead, then she gets angry and then she reveals her hand. Yes. I pretended to lose to you. Um, and it's like, I'm a really good bowler. Ask Ron. And Derek's response is, I don't know who Ron is. <laughs> Uh, but and then it's like, well, let's play again. It's like, all right, I'd love you. And love, I'd love you. I'd love to. And so they do another round and um, Ben comes over. I'd like to introduce you to my friend, anyone else. Um, but Leslie's like, no, nah, I got to beat. I got to beat this guy. Um, and uh, and so now it's getting into it. Uh, and Leslie's doing great. And uh, then, um, yeah, they're they're going back and forth. And uh, Leslie, you know, rubs it in that. And she's he only got a spare. And so, you know, competition, the thrill of competition is happening here. And then cut to Leslie soundly defeating Derek. Um, and uh, and she said, I warned you, I am a good bowler and whatever. Thanks. And this, so this whole thing is like, if I win, you will vote for me. And he's like, if I win, you will clean my house for a month. Um, and so Leslie now she's set up the rules like and she won. So it's like, Derek, you will vote for me. He's like, no, I won't. Uh, I'll just write in the B word, which um, Ben hears that. He's like, what did you just say? And I was like, just ignore him. He's being a jerk. And then he Derek, Derek says it again. And Ben punches him right in the face. <laughs> and Ben is like overwhelmed. He's like, I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. <laughs> and when it cuts to like there was a commercial break there and then it cuts to uh ben is like so you know that's what happened it was just like it was just like pew 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 <laughs> <laughs> and the officer's like what's wrong with you <laughs> so it's already ben is like full of adrenaline because of the you know you punch the guy that's like that's your heart gets racing right and then it's also he's talking to a cop so he's nervous uh because he oh he can't handle talking to a cop and the guy <laughs> Uh, the, the officer says, well, the guy said he might press charges unless like, well, uh, well, we won't be pressing any charges. <laughs> the officer's like, that's not really an option. <laughs> um, and so she's like, it was he was a being a jerk. What Ben did was warranted and extremely awesome. And did you write how awesome it was? And the officer, I love it. When we write official reports, we refrain from using words like jerk or awesome. <laughs> uh, yeah, so. Then uh, Anne is coming over and uh, with the ice for for Tom and, uh, you know, there's a little something happening here with Anne and Tom. There's a little seeds of a, a future relationship here. He's, she's caring for him. Mm -hmm. And uh, and but then also as soon as he um, puts his ice, his fingers in the ice, like, ah, hurt fingies. <laughs> <laughs> um, so. Uh, yeah. So then um, Ron is uh, asked, like they're trying to finish up the game. Uh, Ann and Tom are going to leave. They're like, no, we have to finish you. You last frame your turn. And Tom's like, OK, fine. I'll bowl one handle like an idiot. <laughs> and uh, and he just needs six pins to win and he gets nine. <laughs> and so uh, Tom, it, Tom's like, yeah, I won. King Kong, 
got nothing on me. And he's like, my fingy still hurts. <laughs> um, and uh, so then Anne takes Tom, drives Tom home uh, because uh, he's too hurt to drive, I guess. I um, and then, yeah. So then cut to the next uh, next day at the at JJ's there. But, Ben and Leslie are having breakfast and she's holding up the paper um, with the headline and it came too fast. I didn't stop to read the headline because Leslie's headline is so much better. And she would have gone with no strike bowling bowler struck by Nope's striking bow. <laughs> um, that, is, so, that is a better one. Oh, much better. And uh, and so Ben is like, well, listen, let me re- resign. This will protect you. It, I what I did was wrong. And let's like, no, non-starter. We're just going to go with this. Um, and so she. Um, yeah, so she's going to make this press conference, uh, after this incident with Derek, the paper uh, said bold over campaign manager punches voter candidate yes. embraces him, <laughs> embraces him <laughs> and it's been looking shocked at the camera <laughs> while Derek's on the ground and Ron's just standing over top of him holding the bowling ball. <laughs> uh, yeah. So, um, yeah, the Pawnee son still. Pawnee's too small a town to have a new... Anyway, um, <laughs> is that a problem? Um, so then at the press conference, the uh, reporter asks, are you going to fire Ben Wyatt? Uh, are you going to suspend your campaign? And she says, no. Um, thank you for uh, coming. And on behalf of Ben and everyone involved in my campaign, I want to apologize. You know what? No, I'm not. I'm not sorry. That guy was drunk. He was aggressive. He was rude. He was foul-mouthed. And he called me by my secret second fa- least favorite term for a woman. And my campaign manager punched him. I do not condone violence, but I have to be awesome. It was awesome. And my campaign manager and I made out a lot afterwards. Probably shouldn't have said that. <laughs> but that's what happened. That's what Derek, happened. Hates, Derek hates me and I don't particularly like him. So what's the point, right, Derek? Derek's Derek standing there the whole <laughs> <Yeah>. time. <laughs> right. <laughs> it's like, I don't like him. He doesn't like me. So what's the point, right? And he's like, I think you're being kind of a B word right now. See? <laughs> <laughs> so I'm not going to apologize. <laughs> and, and so this is the growth moment where Leslie had to learn. Like, so people won't vote for me because of that. Well, there's nothing I can do about it. But you should be warned. If you do not vote for me, my boyfriend might beat you up. <laughs> um, so a good recovery after that incident um, and then goes back to a focus group and uh, and the focus group is watching this press conference. And so Tom's getting overall impressions. What do you like? What do you don't like? Um, and someone starts saying, I like her. And Tom's like, name? Well, I don't know. She's tough. <laughs> so look at that. Leslie's tough. Another one just like, I like her. And then another one, I like that the one guy punched the other guy. And then I like that she stood by him. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, yeah. So Ben's like, see, people uh, go with their gut. But that guy said uh, he didn't like my earrings. So can you go punch him? <laughs> so, um, yeah. So there was a growth moment here for Leslie recognizing that not everybody's going to like her. And that's part of the deal. Um, but, uh, yeah, she just needs to get over that. Now the credit scene. Ron goes back to the bowling alley and uh, he requests the lane uh, 22, which is all the way at the very end. He's wearing sunglasses, a hat, um, and uh, he wants to get to the bottom of Tom's bowling secrets. And so he starts bowling granny style (laughs) and uh, strike after strike after strike cut to and like the uh, the score screen. Perfect game. The Uh, owner comes over. Hey, what's your name? Put it on the wall. And Ron's like, I was never here. And you will never speak of this again. (laughs) (laughs) A 300. Yeah, that's that's really hard. Now, Jeremy, I wrote this down in my notes. Mm -hmm. You were on a bowling team. I, I, I took a bowling. I took two semesters of bowling in college. Okay. You, you're, you. You are academically interested in bowling. That's true. Um, I got I got A's both both quarters. Hey, good job, man. Yeah. Um, w- w- why do people not bowl underhanded? Like, or I guess it's all underhanded. You never overthrow. Right. Uh, right. Why? Why people? Why don't people? <laughs> like, that'd be I've, impressive. I've seen, I've seen people try. <laughs> <laughs> why? Why do? Why don't more people bowl granny style? Uh, you don't. You don't really have the control. Uh, it's it's hard to repeat over and over again and you need the actual speed because the the lane and the oil patterns can take over mm-hmm. so uh yeah that's that's why so is uh is tom or ron's perfect game here at the end that's not that's not possible right i 
I, I would say there's uh, there might have been a little bit of editing magic. What you know, they may have may have spliced together a bunch of strikes. If you notice, uh, you know, and I did appreciate the fact that when they did show Tom's strikes, it was one continuous shot. Like I don't know how many times it took him to do that, but then when they showed Ron's, I think he did one, and then the rest of them were just close ups of the the pins falling down. So, yeah, I mean, you can do it. You can do it. It's just you're not going to be you're not going to be very accurate. Do you think maybe they put like a magnet under the the lane? <laughs> Uh, with Tom for that long shot to get the strike? I I don't, but what I wish they had done is put a, a camera inside the ball, like in the Big Lebowski. Oh my Co- goodness. Coen brothers to make yeah. you really sick right before. <laughs> oh man, I love that movie. <laughs> yeah. The grownups are talking, Donnie. <laughs> <laughs> You're out of your league. You're out of your league. <laughs> Mark it eight, dude. <laughs> uh, you, want a, you want a toe? I can get you a toe. <laughs> And that's why you don't. Okay. Anyway. Um, yeah. Are you, I mean, we've, we've bowled, we've, we've, yeah. we've had some fun times bowling. What, uh, are you, uh, I mean, I'm terrible at bowling and you oh, know yeah, this. Are you, are you pro bowl? Like, do you, I mean, do, you, do, you, do you enjoy it? I always enjoy getting ready to go bowling. <laughs> and like up to what point, like the sh- putting on the shoes or um, no, the shoes are fine selecting the ball because i don't i don't have my own because i i don't i don't bowl frequently (laughs) enough to necessitate a my own ball um so i'm always looking for a uh, decent ball uh and that's fine this is all good so far um and then it's usually around the fourth frame where i'm just like why am i doing this (laughs) (laughs) oh there's six more of these oh my (laughs) gosh the last one's got three if i do well like is that is that punishment punishment (laughs) (laughs) yeah i um I'm really bad at bowling. One time I rolled, a, I bowled a 36 and that was with a strike. <laughs> I'm really bad at bowling. So, yeah. I, I, I'm sorry, man. What's your best score? What's your best score? 280. Oh, wow. <laughs> yeah. Big time. <laughs> I missed. Yeah. I was, I was decent. It was fun. It was, it was really fun. I, I, I enjoy bowling. I think that's a big part of it. If you enjoy it and. You know, you, you, pr- I mean, we, we played every day at like seven o'clock and we bowl two, or we, we call them a line, a line, a, a line of bowling. Uh, we, we bowl up to three. So basically three games of bowling a day. And we did that twice a week. It was it, 7 PM, 7 AM. Oh yeah. Whoa. The morning bowling at the, uh, <laughs> at the Linwood, at the Linwood bowling skate. <laughs> this was, wait, I got, I got college credit for that. <laughs> was this at Puget Sound? No, Edmonds. Edmonds Community. Yeah. Oh, my word. It was, it was for my PE credit. I only needed two, and bowling was one. <laughs> one credit, so I had to take two quarters. You took bowling and then advanced bowling? <laughs> I did. <laughs> yeah, the second yeah. quarter, we really got into how to spin it. <laughs> did you really? No, we did that oh. the first quarter. So what's the second quarter? More bowling. <laughs> Is it the exact same class? You just took the exact same class twice? <laughs> Pretty much. Yeah. Oh my word. It was so, much. so the secret, the secret to curving the ball is not to not to try to like 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 a lot of people try to cup it, like they break their wrists, like they're trying to, you know, really get around it and over top of it. And what I was taught was as you're rolling the ball, if you go bowling, next time you go bowling, try it, it'll take a while. You as you roll. And you're coming by your leg. You want to turn your hand like you're turning a doorknob. You just just let it kind of come out. And as it comes off of your fingers, your fingers grip the holes, and it'll start spinning, uh, whichever handed you are. And uh, yeah, that's how you put some some spin on the ball. There you All go. Right. Here's your tip for the day. Well, thanks everybody. Uh, uh, I'm, I'm sure we're are going to be all going to be much better bowlers now. <laughs> so if you came here for anything other than bowling advice. What are you de- what are you doing? Um yeah, so listener, what's your highest what's your highest score? <laughs> I think my highest score bowling was probably like a 140 when I did like I, I did really well. I was like I I think I should retire. Um but yeah, listener, what's your highest bowling score and uh, do you and, and do you consider bowling a sport? Cuz some people don't. I do. Yeah, it's I do a, too. It, it's athletic. Yeah. It requires skill um, and special and, equipment like and training. Shoes. Yeah. So it- real, real, real quick before we wrap up. Um, so Derek was uh, actor Kevin Dorf and he was a he's a writer. This is all IMDb. I don't have this off the top of my head. But what I found interesting was he wrote and he acted uh, uh, through Conan's 
uh, The Late Show and The Tonight Show. Mm -hmm. Um, And then he was also in Brooklyn Nine-Nine. He was Hank the bartender. Mm -hmm. And he was in one episode of um, The The Office. Office. Yeah. Yeah. So. Yeah. yeah, Kevin Dorff and Jason uh, Manzoukas. Manzoukas, yeah. Uh, They were both on uh, Conan Mm -hmm. at different times. And also Jeremy Jam was on Conan a lot. So. Yeah, and he he actually um, uh, Kevin Dorf uh, wrote for Jeremy Jam's. Um, uh, he had a TV show for a little while. He did the 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 gear one. Yeah, yeah, that's oh, a good show. That's an I actually really enjoyed that show. So yeah, so there you right. go. Well, good listener, let us know your bowling score. Email us parksandconversation at gmail dot com, and uh, we'll. Uh, be back next week for Operation Ann. Operation Ann. I don't remember that episode at all. That's how good it's going to be. Mm. But Is Orin's it? in it, so. Oh, yeah. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <All right>. Okay. <laughs> all right. This one's fun. <laughs> uh, uh, I look forward to it. All right. I'll talk to you later. All right. Bye. <laughs>